sociopath businessman tells the truth about capitalism. The last few years haven't been easy on anyone. First, we had a once in a century pandemic, then a war in Europe fueled inflation everywhere. But according to one wealthy businessman, the mm -hmm. workers of the world have got it too easy. I think the problem that we've had is that we've, you know, we, we have, people decided they didn't really want to work so much anymore through COVID and that has- That's happened. true. That's so true, bro. How many of y'all went to Taco Bell and the shit was closed? Yep. Uh, I mean, y'all, like y'all, y'all had that happen? Bro, I said, fuck those unemployment benefits. I want my goddamn burrito. Yep. Had a massive issue on productivity. You know, tradies have definitely pulled back on productivity. You know, they, they have been paid, paid a lot to mm -hmm. do not too much in the last few years. And we need to see that change. We need to see unemployment rise. Unemployment has to jump 40, 50% in my view. We need to see pain in the economy. We need to remind people that they work for the employer, not the other way around. Right, naturally. And uh, I, I agree with them, but for a different reason. I think that we need to see unemployment rise because uh, all these people that are working these fucking jobs that they hate, they need to automate these fucking jobs. And this is happening already. This is an inevitability and it's happening more every fucking year. And everybody thinks, oh, it's not gonna happen to me. Oh, it's gonna be different, right? And so the truth is that uh, the, the problem is that there's an element of this that's true. And the issue is that people are so, so focused around paying, uh, paying like some random person with really no skills, a bunch of money to do a job that's going to be replaced by a robot in a few years. This is really just not a long term solution for life, is it? It's not a long term solution for society to pay some random ass person that doesn't fucking know anything $20 an hour to go and do some, uh, you know, like light physical labor. It's just not gonna, like, this is not gonna work. In 10 years, this is gonna be stupid. Like, we used to have uh, manufacturing lines and uh, assembly lines back in the day. Now we don't have that because robots do that. And you know where those people are? They're on their fucking ass. And it's the same with trains. There's t tons of things, right? What do you think happened whenever they made cars? All the people that dealt with uh, horses, they were done. So this guy is forward thinking. It's just that he's a fucking asshole and he has the wrong solution. That's what I think. They're not on their ass though. Well, they're doing something that's not as good as what they used to be doing. They used to get paid like a ton of fucking money uh, to work on an assembly line. They had a crazy union. They were making so much money and then it all got automated out from underneath them and they lost all of that, uh, all of that, uh, security. They lost uh, being part of the middle class. They lost being able to afford to have a single income or income earner household. Uh, they, they lost so much. Yeah, absolutely. They lost leverage. Yeah, they did. And they lost their jobs. That's what it was. Audit, you mean automated? You mean outsourced to China? Well, what I mean is that, uh, that they're not going to have a job. Does it really matter what it is? In the economy, we need to remind people. So somebody, I, I, real quick, I want to make sure I, I address one more thing. Because now we make trash, not life-lasting goods. Shady Tree, you're the one that just gone and said that Russell Brand is a whole fucking media narrative against him. Bro, I don't know if that's true, but I know that shit isn't true, what you just said. Do you honestly think they can't make things last forever nowadays? Bro, we got th things in the ocean. We got plastic bags that last longer than a fucking smartphone nowadays because they won't deteriorate in the Pacific Ocean. And so they're getting stuck in, uh, in Shamu's beak and killing dolphins. So do you really think that we can't make them work? Or do you think that it's actually a term that Apple had recently been sued for called planned obsolescence and it owes a fine and a class action lawsuit between 200 million and 500 million dollars because it was proven that they make shit to break. So you buy it again. Keep it in mind. It's not that people, it's not that the quality went down. Well, it is. But it's working as intended. It's not a bug, it's a feature. That they work for the employer, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is a, yeah. there's been a systematic change. And you've got to remember, like, where is this? This is a property summit. So these are all people that probably own like 17 different houses. And so uh, their their biggest problem is like a tenant um, not giving them uh, their money, right? It's like they've got like, you know, 15 to 20 uh, cookie clicker farms, you know, cookie factories making them cookies. And whenever one of the factories stops working, well, then they get new employees that work in there. Those are the tenants. But uh, the thing is like, 
for like an average person this is like a it's it's a it's a lifestyle that's so abstract that you hear this guy talking about it and it just makes everybody fucking furious yeah not the other way around i mean there is a there's been a systematic change where employees feel the employer is extremely lucky to have them um, as opposed which is true i think this is absolutely true i remember back whenever i was trying to get a job and this is in like 2011 you guys remember the fucking recession in 2008 oh my god that was awful i couldn't get a fucking job at walmart can you believe that it was awful and so yeah now like it's a completely different situation back in the day i used to see ads and hear ads for um advertisements for job sites or job like a. Uh, there's like these companies, right? Indeed, uh, I, I, I think Indeed's probably the biggest one. I can't think of like five others uh, that like, you know, connect employers with employees. And like back then they were focused at targeting employees looking for a job. And now if you hear this on the radio, correct me if I'm wrong, but I hear this all the time. Do you hear the same thing? Now those same commercials are targeting employers looking for employees. It's the other way around. So it's a dynamic that has to change. We've mm -hmm. got to kill that attitude and that has to come through hurting the economy, which is what the whole global, you know, the, the world is trying to do. The By the way, that's not what's going to cause that. Uh, the reason why people don't work is because they can get money from the government. You take away the government assistance and they go starving and then they're going to go back to work. They'll accept worse conditions. That's just how it is. Uh, it, it's, it's literally that simple. Like, it's, it's got nothing to do with the economy. It's got to do with the uh, government assistance and the alternative, in my opinion. Governments around the world are trying to increase... He's not even right. ...to get that to some sort of normality. And we're yeah. seeing it. I think every employer now is seeing it. I mean, there is definitely massive layoffs going off. People might not be talking about it, but people are definitely laying people off, and we're starting to see less arrogance in the... Uh, people are getting laid off. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably true. I mean, you've got a lot of uh, reasons for that. And again, I'm probably not as educated as somebody who probably should be speaking about this. So I really don't know what I'm talking about here. But like my understanding of the reasons of this is that obviously like a lot of tech companies are doing massive layoffs because they overhired and they overexpanded during COVID. And then you also have a global recession that I think people have been predicting now for about a year. And so you have this kind of just contracting the economy, contracting employment, and then you also have uh, inflation. So you put all three of these things together, and I, it's not a surprise that companies don't want to hire a bunch of people. And actually, inflation is probably not even one of the main reasons. Uh, I was actually thinking of something else, automation. Jobs are just simply being automated. It's happening right now, and it's going to happen more every year. The employment market, and that has to continue because that will cascade across the cost balance. Mm -hmm. That was Australian millionaire property developer Tim Gurner speaking to a conference for investors. Now, it was pretty shocking, and it's gone viral. And that's smart, right? That's an investor conversation. That's not a conversation for the public. Lots of people saying he comes across as a complete sociopath, which I think he does. I'm actually quite appreciative, um, though, that he said that, because I do think he is essentially articulating what is the dominant consensus among policymakers in the capitalist world. I think this is the way that most people feel about their employees because they don't want the employees to have the power over them. They want to have the power over the employee. Is it really so surprising that somebody wants to maintain a power imbalance that's beneficial to themselves? Come on, fucking obviously. Right? Duh. And it's especially interesting because he was basically repeating verbatim a theory put forward by one of the 20th century's most influential leftist economists. So it's a guy called Michel Kalecki. He was a Polish economist right. and a contemporary of John Maynard Keynes, but he was more skeptical of the promise of capitalism than John Maynard Keynes. So Keynes, he believed that smart governments could manage capitalism so that full employment would be maintained and inflation would be kept low. And so you could have harmony between capitalists and, and workers, essentially. You could make capitalism okay. work for everyone. Keynes was a big supporter of things such as the New Deal under FDR. So you sort of pump money into the economy mm -hmm. to maintain full employment. Businesses still make profits. Workers are getting decent wages. Unemployment is low. Everyone's happy. That was Keynes' idea. I mean, I'm probably, you know, to somewhat, uh, to some degree simplifying it, but that's the, the long and short of it. Kalecki, though, disagreed. He doubted that capitalists would ever accept this deal. Now, in his classic 1943 essay, Political Aspects, of full employment. Kalecki wrote this. Full employment would cause social and political changes which would give a new impetus to the opposition of the business leaders. The sack would cease to play its role as a disciplinary measure. 
the social position of the boss would be undermined, and the self-assurance and class consciousness of the working class would grow. Discipline in the factories and political stability are more appreciated than profits by business leaders. Their class instinct tells them that lasting full employment is unsound from their point of view, and that unemployment is an integral part of the normal capitalist system. So Kalecki there is saying that while full employment might be technically possible within capitalism, so that's a sort of Keynes line, the politics of it won't work. And that's because bosses need to be able to control their workers, and they can only control them with the threat of unemployment and ultimately the threat of uh i don't know i I think there's like some truth to that right is like probably getting fired is the main reason why people do their job as well as they do like if you couldn't get fired from your job would you really show up at nine o'clock like maybe you get there at like nine oh seven maybe like nine forty seven sometimes right because it's like it that's early i mean fuck it's really early and so it depends on if I still get paid. Yeah, well, obviously, you probably still get paid. And I think also, like, uh, you know, you talk about what is full employment, right? Is this a defined term? Because I think, obviously, um, you know, I, I, my understanding is, like, full employment isn't even really that much of a great thing because it means that the society can't grow and it's like the economy can't expand because you can't put new people into new industry. But again, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not an expert on this the same way these guys are. To poverty. Now, if you threaten your work with unemployment, but you've got quite generous mm-hmm. unemployment payments, then, yeah, that's not going to be a particularly effective disciplining mechanism. But if you threaten your workers with unemployment and also you have low unemployment benefits, yeah. then, yeah, they are going to find it a little bit scary to stand up to you, right? So, basically- well, Of course, I mean, it makes sense, right? And that's what I was saying before. People obviously want to have the... Uh, they obviously want to have the power imbalance. It's common sense. And, and, and employees, by the way, uh, employees would do the same thing. Like, if the, if, it, if the shoe was on the other foot, employees would be not showing up to work, doing all kinds of shitty work, not trying, and then wanting to get paid more money for it. I think the root of all evil in the world is scarcity. People want more things because they don't have what they already, what they want. And because of that, People will always push it. People will always keep going. And I think this is especially true. Money? Well, what does money buy, right? People don't really want money. People want what money can buy. And what money can buy is things that are scarce. So that that's, again, like, that's just, that's the way I see things. I mean, again, what the fuck? I could be wrong, but this is the way I've seen things. And so, uh, anyway, the point I'm making is, like, Whenever you have these uh, these dynamics, of course, the people that are in the advantageous position are going to take advantage of them because that's what always happens. That's why you need checks and balances. That's why you need different types of uh, accountability. It's common sense. Basically, you want to put workers in a vulnerable, in a precarious situation yeah. precisely so they don't get ideas above their station. Precisely so, they have to listen to the boss and not speak back. And it's for that reason, not necessarily because of technocratic reasons such as inflation. So often you'll hear sort of uh, Mm -hmm. there's this trade-off between inflation and unemployment, and that's why we can't have full employment or we can't have employment Mm -hmm. to a a very high level all the time. What Kalecki is saying is it hasn't really got anything to do with a technocratic issue about inflation. What it's got to do with is politics it's got to do with power it's about the power of the employer yeah, of vis-a-vis the worker and that's why because well, with un- the power imbalance you get people to do things that are above your value because like now if you have a power imbalance you can negotiate for things that are not equal that's why people want a power imbalance it's what makes sense because they get more money that way under capitalism i mean you'll shit. always have precarity because they need it now Somebody, somebody says in chat, you have points where you make good points. You also have points where you sound like an absolute naive idiot. Wh- which point did I say that you disagree with? Let's go. Let's go. Let's get this out of the way. You don't know what you're talking about. All right, let's go. What did I say that was wrong? Because you've been in here arguing for a while. Uh, the corporate culture bits. What part? Do you agree capitalism is the issue? Corporations looking out for each other? Uh, I, I, it, I, don't think that, I don't think that the needs of the people can be met with economic systems. 
uh what's this here uh people get hooked on corporate culture it's a different environment it's a different no 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 but what did i say that was wrong like what did i say that makes me sound like absolute naive idiot like what is it specific like why why is it like i literally i pull your message up and you get you have a fucking front you you are on uh, you got a spotlight on the front of the stage to fucking tell me what i'm wrong about just do it what am i wrong about What's the problem? Like, why Why are you talking about generalities? Like, I'm saying a specific thing that I said that was wrong. What was it? There's no purely economic system. Well, what I mean by that is that, uh, like, I don't think that you should view... I don't think you should look at companies to solve the problems for people. Because companies do not exist for the benefit of their workers. They exist for profit. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. But you shouldn't look to them to solve the problem that people have. You should require the government to do that because that's the government's responsibility, not a company's responsibility. I actually think that it's very bad that people put so much emphasis on companies to provide welfare for citizens. I think the government should be providing welfare for citizens. And I think that the focus on having companies provide welfare for citizens is only going to accelerate automation. It's only going to accelerate jobs being removed. And I think that ultimately the people will lose because that's the way technology is going. Companies should pay their taxes? Well, I mean, yeah, sure. I agree with you. Fair? Whoa, chat? What, what, well, I mean, fair. Like, uh, bro, why? Like, why is it... Why is it that every time I pull somebody up, they don't have a point? And just to, to, to follow, to finish the thought, I'm a universal basic income enjoyer. I think it's an inevitability. And I think that in 50 years, people are going to realize that probably sooner than that. It's not that because I care about people or anything like that. It, I just think it's, it's obvious this is going to happen. It's going to have to happen. You said earlier that welfare is a problem. What the fuck? No, I didn't. I said welfare is the reason why people don't do their jobs. You're right. So what's the solution to that? The solution to that... Have you ever thought that maybe you should think a little bit outside the box? Maybe the solution to people not wanting to do shitty fucking jobs is to find a way to where people don't have to do those shitty fucking jobs rather than trying to incentivize them to do them. Okay, all right, he typed something. No, I had a bit of a point like eight minutes ago, lost train of thought during a considerate guy. I don't think you know much about corporate culture, how luring it is. It's like cult of mentality. You say that, but yeah, I mean, but you say that with anything, right? Everything's a cult of mentality. Religion, fucking Twitch, entertainment culture, influencer culture, YouTube, fucking Twitter, um, you know, like a corporate culture, uh, anything, like political, uh, political climate, like everything is, is, a, is a fucking, like, what was the word? Cult mentality. Everything. Rivka, I've always loved Kalecki's theories, and that property investor to me, um, you know, lots of people criticizing him, but to me, he's demonstrated the logic of Kalecki better than any leftist academic might be able to. And for that, I'm somewhat grateful to him. It's interesting that there's been so much outrage at his comments. You know, it's a mask off moment. They expose the way in which capitalism normally operates. But it kind of, in a way, shows how much faith people put in the system day to day. That it's only at these moments when some random Australian dude with like a massive forehead <laughs> kind of just lays out how the system works that people are so um, aghast. Um, but I think, I think what's interesting is this came up actually a, a couple of weeks ago, I think when I was um, on the show, when we, when we talked about the statistic that half of renters or more than half of renters in the UK at the moment are one paycheck away from homelessness. And I think it's actually more in the US, right? Isn't it like 60, 70 percent? Yeah, I remember reading 60, 70 percent. What percentage of people are one pay check away from bankruptcy? Oh, no, I'm actually wrong. It's only 40 percent. <laughs> but oh, no, wait a minute. <laughs> this one says 59. So it was it was 40 percent in 2019. <laughs> and now it's up to 59. So now in 2021, I'm still wrong because it's probably 80. Holy shit. I argued, and I would argue all the more so in relation to this clip, that that's by design. The Tories want a housing crisis where we are all on the verge of homelessness. This is some fucking UK poli- I know, I just, I know Tories are people in the UK. I don't know anything about them. Like, listen. Like, I, I don't know about this shit. <laughs> yeah. 
because that disciplines the workforce and that disciplines private rental, uh, private renters incredibly yeah. effectively. Because oh, if does. we're constantly, no, right about um, you know, lying awake at night, worried that we might be made homeless or redundant or be fired, then we're not going to ask for a pay rise. We're not exactly. going to ask for a rent reduction. It works. Yeah, you're not going to ask for like, uh, and this is what would happen back in the day. Yo, I remember whenever um, a Walmart got, got uh, everybody got pissed off at Walmart because they were making people work off the clock and making people clock out and still working, giving people like uh, 39 and a half hours a, uh, a week uh, so they wouldn't have to pay them full time, etc. So like uh, Amazon too? Well, Amazon, I, I feel like, I don't know if Amazon did that. I think Amazon just overworked people, but I could be wrong. Um, either way... Uh, the reason why that happened, the reason why people were okay with that is very simple. It's because uh, they couldn't get a job anywhere else. So they had to eat shit. Because if you don't have anything else to eat, you have to eat shit. And so it's in their best interest that you don't have anything else to eat. Fantastically well. I mean, Kalecki um, is... is has theorized this um, tremendously well. And, and I think it's really interesting, some of the stuff you've quoted there, but it's also like Marx, you know, Marx laid out the fact that integral to capitalism was this idea of surplus or what he called reserve humanity. People that capitalism didn't need within the workforce um, itself, but did need in order to, to discipline the working class. I mean, he, he argued that they were part of the working class, but also kind of like almost a shadow working class there in the background to remind you that this is what you could be um, if if you don't get on with your work and if you if you try and ask for more. I was that's clever. I, I think that's very true. Actually, I agree with that. Yeah, I, th I think that's true because, you know, religions do this too. That's why they have like hell and you know, like there's all these things like, oh, well, you don't want to do this. You don't want to do that. Yeah, it's actually, that's that's good logic. Actually reminded of a conversation that I had with um, a family member recently. We were in central London and we walked past a homeless man. We kind of had a- Oh my God, Marx was a retard? I mean, you say Marx is stupid as fuck all you want, but he's right about this. He's right about this. That's why every other fucking system does this. Like, you know why they have public executions? It's for the same reason. That's why they burn people alive. You think they burned Jonah Ark alive for no reason? No, they did that to show a fucking message. To say, hey, you do this shit, we're gonna set you on fire. Cause it's fun. No, it's not gonna, maybe, maybe some of them have fun, but that wasn't the main reason. That's the second exam. That's the second reason. So yeah, everybody does, China, yeah, look, everybody does this shit. Every single, like, power structure Almost all of them have some form of conspicuous punishment to administer justice and to make people know that they have to fall in line. Almost every single power structure has this. It's nothing, uh, it, it, it's, it's nothing unique to Marx. Discussion about um, whether there should be homelessness in the UK and whether we should try and alleviate it by giving people money. Mm -hmm. um, and she was arguing, you know, if we didn't have what would be the point of wanting to have if there weren't any have-nots? And I think that's exactly, she had internalized the logic of capitalism. She was effectively saying, it works on me. There being people in society who are marginalized, who are unemployed, who are homeless. I don't agree that the fundamental of capitalism is to make other people not have things. I don't think that there is any law in capitalism that says that there are certain people who shouldn't be able to even afford a living. That's crazy. This makes me afraid enough to, to work harder. And so in a way, what Tim Gunn is saying is, is exactly correct. This is integral to the function of capitalism, that there's a surplus section of humanity that's there in the shadows waiting as a, as a kind of grim reminder of what happens if you try and unionize, if you try and do a rent strike, if you try and organize in any for any kind of um, people power. Um, but, you know, it's worth remembering that whilst this guy is getting a lot of heat on Twitter, this is exactly what central banks and, uh, you know, the Bank of England is saying that it's doing. The Australian Reserve Bank, for example, has recently said that it wants more unemployment. The Bank of England raising interest rates is in part to encourage um, a squeeze on demand, um, including in the labor force, that will create more unemployment. This is the UK. I'm going to be honest. As I said, I, I don't I don't like talking about 
other countries' politics. Uh, it's because it's not because I don't give a fuck. It's because I just kind of respect that it's like I don't really understand what their specifics are, right? Like, I'm not part of their culture. I don't understand them. I don't live there. Like, I, it, so it's not out of... Uh, not out of not caring, where it's like, I mean, I don't really give a shit, right? It's not my problem. But it's also out of respect. Also, uh, we'll pull somebody else up. Hey, when Asmund talks positive, are you, uh, what are you unhappy about? What, what are you unhappy about, Shay? What did I say that upset you? And I swear to God, if you use a generality, I'm going to be so fucking pissed off at you. I'm going to be fucking furious. You piece of shit. You just have a narrow view, narrow vision about the world and how fun. You piece of fucking shit. But why the fuck can't you just say what I'm wrong about? Why the fuck can't you do that? It's not hard to win an argument whenever you're typing something and their person gets to speak in return. I would argue the opposite. I think it would be easier to argue something if you were typing and the other person was speaking. Because you can formulate your words exactly, and the person can remove the way that the words are communicated outside of the message. I think that people who think that it puts them at a disadvantage whenever they have to type instead of speak are just simply bad communicators in written language. I like writing, because I think writing helps me understand my thoughts better. Do homeless people not exist? You're saying people don't work uh, because of welfare, for example, and they would go to work if they had no money. Do homeless people not exist? Do people not starve? Is there no mental illness that cause these problems? No, but like, uh, okay, so like, are you saying, so well, let me read this real quick. You're saying people don't work because of welfare, for example. So you're saying that like everybody, like every single person who is a janitor or a garbage man right now, like being a garbage man, it's not a job that I look down on, but it's a job that fucking sucks. You have to wake up at like 3.30 in the morning. It, you have to deal with garbage all day. It sucks. Do you really think that if every single person who is a garbage man could just instantly get paid the same salary for sitting at home every single day that we'd still have the same amount of garbage men? I oh, do you talk about games. Are you talk about politics? That's it. You have very different views. A view is not, I have no problem. Like, it, it's weird that you, like, I'm just, I'm trying to think of, like, how I can respond to this, right? Because, so, like, maybe you hear half of what I say, and you don't hear the other half of what I say. So, like, my solution to this isn't to take people off of welfare. It's to increase welfare to where the people that don't want to do these jobs don't have to. I don't think that it's a good thing in society to have an underclass of people that are underprivileged, that have no resources, no political power, no social power, no economic power, that do nothing, and they get effectively used as second-class citizens. And that's what we have. And I think this is very unhealthy. It's extremely unhealthy. It's unhealthy, uh, I would say, argumentatively, morally it is unhealthy. I think it's ethically unhealthy, and I think it is functionally unhealthy. And I think it will become more unhealthy every year as the jobs that these people occupy become irrelevant. So instead of trying to force these people into going into these jobs that they hate, that are awful, I think the solution should be figuring out a way to where less people have to do them, and the people that are having to do them, the way that they do them is better. That's the solution. It, you can't just, it's not just about paying people more money. So I understand, like, and this is the thing, right? Is, uh, fundamentally disagree on the fact that you imply that people don't want to be a part of society and not contribute. I do not believe that to be the case at all. I do think that people do, um, and I, I think this is a, uh, it's a psychologically studied thing. I believe, I could be wrong, uh, that people do have a fundamental desire, uh, and people, obviously, this is a general statement, so, like, not everybody, but I think a lot of people most certainly don't want to contribute. If I could be a leech, I would be a leech like a motherfucker. I think that a lot of people want to contribute to society, but the way that they want to contribute to society isn't defined in economic terms. 
There are people who might want to be an artist. They might want to help kids. They might want to, uh, you know, be a painter. Well, I guess an artist and a painter is kind of the same thing. Uh, they might want to help elderly or something like that. So there's a lot of things that people want to do that contribute to society, but they don't necessarily generate an economic outcome, right? They want to be a musician. So I do think that most people want to fundamentally contribute to society, but I don't think that they want to fundamentally contribute to society inside of the narrow range that economic employment provides. So, like, I agree with you and I disagree with you. Maybe it's confusing, right? I think people do want to be teachers. There's people who do want to be teachers. People do want to be police officers. But I think there's a lot less people that want to be garbage men, for example. Yeah, people want to make video games, something like that. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. People don't want to contribute to society's sake. People are self-interested and they do what they can for their ego. You're right, but sometimes people's ego wants them to contribute to society. Dr. K talked about this. He said it's the ego of having no ego. I think it was actually very insightful. Uh, I watched a video we did about this like two years ago. Teacher shortage is a big problem. You want to know why there's a teacher shortage? I've talked to teachers. Because being a teacher fucking sucks. I cannot think of a job that's worse than being a teacher. Maybe being a policeman sucks as much. Probably policeman probably sucks about as much, right? Or more. Uh, but being a uh, being a teacher is probably one of the worst jobs. Like I, I think it's a huge. I think it's a huge fucking problem. So like teachers now, this is like the crazy thing. And I'm only talking. These are people that I've talked to in like the Austin area. So like these are the school districts here. I don't know how it is where you're at. But, like, there was a person who I was talking to about this, and they told me that they now have to respond. There's, like, a, uh, a fucking app that teachers have to deal with in, like, certain school districts where the parents can send the teacher messages, and the teacher is required to respond to those messages at pretty much all times. And not only that, they have to do that off, off their own time. And this is, like, a new thing that's been created. I'm like, yeah, it's fucked up. They need to stop that. I mean, sure, but, like, I'm just telling you how it is. Well, well, pan incredibly exhausting. And teachers also, on top of that, like, they get paid for shit. Um, you know, you have one crazy teacher who's trying to teach, uh, like, first graders about, like, like, anal sex. And, like, they do a TikTok about it. And then everybody thinks every teacher is, like, a crazy like sex freak. Have you guys seen this? Huh? What are you hawing me for? I'm talking truth. Yeah, I'm not I'm not making this up. What I'm saying is that uh should we have a public school system in shambles. Well, what I'm what I'm getting at right is that like teachers get shit on for these things that happen that go viral. So like being a teacher, you get shit on constantly by the parents because now whenever the student doesn't do well, it's the teacher's fault, not the student's fault. It's what I hear. Um and then on top of that, you get paid like shit. Uh, you, you know, like they say you have three months off, but you kind of don't because you have to work and do other stuff at the same time during summer vacation. Then you also don't get enough money to pay for all the stuff for your schools or sorry for your classes. So you need to take your own money that is very limited and then spend it on school supplies because the parents can't afford it. And it's just awful. And then you've got to grade papers. And then again, you've got parents that are messaging you on an app at eight o'clock at night and you're required to respond within a period of hours. Yeah, no wonder there's a teacher shortage. Fuck that. Why would anybody want to do that? You know, our governments are, are you know, claim to think of um, unemployment as some great social ill that needs eliminating. But in truth, in truth, if there weren't any people unemployed in society, the system wouldn't work. And so they create, they intentionally encourage and create unemployment in order to discipline us who are in the workforce. It's worth noting, this isn't the first time that property developer Tim Gurner has caused controversy with... Wait, um, this guy's done... He's, this guy's at it again? ...comments which sound wildly oh, out of wow. touch and somewhat sociopathic, even if they do just reflect we should um, watch the real interests of capital. Um, in 2017, he told a reporter... This, we are coming into a new reality where first home buyers, second home buyers, and a lot of people won't own a house in their lifetime. That is just the reality of where we're going. So you think that young people have now got the prospect of... He's right. ...of never owning a house. <laughs> I live in Austin. ...home. Absolutely, when you're spending $40 a day on smashed avocado and coffees and not working. I, of course. Absolutely.
Now, I looked at the average price of an apartment in Melbourne. Yeah, and see, this is the interesting thing about a guy like that, is that he's right, but he's wrong about the reason. That's what makes him interesting. It's about 800000 Australian dollars. To afford that, you'd have to save $40 every day for 55 years. But that is not a good strategy to get on the housing market. And, of course, that's assuming that there are actually people paying $40 a day for avocado on toast and coffee, which seems a little bit implausible to me. There are a lot of people who are poor because they make bad financial decisions. But if they didn't make bad financial decisions, they probably still wouldn't be able to afford a $600,000 house. Of course, um, Tim Gurner has less need to save for his first house because you guessed it. Gurner got on the property ladder with loans from his boss, who also there it is. happened to be his grandfather. That's convenient. So this is who we're taking That's financial advice from. Everyone else needs to get a little bit poorer and a little bit more desperate so they work harder for yep. their bosses. This guy gets to get on the property ladder by borrowing money from his granddad. It's that simple. There it is. A small loan of a million dollars. What are the chances? I don't know, probably like 90%. <laughs> You know, something like that. I wish that there was more of a focus. This personally is like a, a an opinion I have is I think there's too much of a focus being put on private individuals and private companies to solve the problems of society. I think these are problems that need to be solved by the government. And the problem is, is not that people like this exist because people like this have always existed and they will always exist. The problem is that their impact and their influence isn't checked. That's what the issue is. Because people like this are always going to be around. It's on the government to pull the reins on these companies that are being taken advantage of the citizens. Exactly, yeah. And it's on the citizens to put the pressure on the government. And that's why I think it's kind of problematic whenever we have uh, videos like this talking about like these companies and how bad they are. It's like, yeah, we can all get around and circle jerk about how much this guy's a dickhead, right? It's like this Gordon Gecko, fucking slick back hair, 1980s real estate guru that actually just has a grandfather that was involved with this. Like, what the fuck are we listening to this clown for, right? Like, absolutely, I can go there. But... What's the point of it? You see what I'm saying? Like, what's the point of it? Like, it's gonna go nowhere. What are we gonna do? Get mad about this asshole? It goes nowhere. So that's just what I think.